What I'm going to talk about is going to change some of your lives, the way you look at yourself and the way you look at the world around you. The subject matter is not the kind of matter to get from ordinary sources or books. A major problem with the world's people today is they believe that human values and behavior and decisions are made within a human being. Actually, this is not the case. That's a major cause of most of the world's problems. It is the environment they're reared in. If you cannot understand that, think of the language you use and the values you have and the attitudes about a good old USA. If you brought up in Iran, the value system would be different. Your language would be different. Therefore, it is not within the human being to know the difference between what you would call operant behavior or useful behavior or useful values. All your values are inculcated by environment, the books you read, the motion pictures you see, the role models you have. Therefore, human beings are not, I repeat this, are not responsible for their values. They are learned. Human nature is the way people have found other people to behave over many long years. They appear to manifest greed, jealousy, envy, even animals. If you take a cat and put it on your lap in the presence of the dog, the dog may growl. And a psychologist, that's what I mean by the nature of the beast. So I said, come on down to my lab in about a week. So I picked up my cat, put it on my lap, and the dog's tail starts wagging. Because you reinforce the dog before you pick up the cat and put it. The cat is a threat to the dog's security. The dog wants you to pet it, not the cat. So you, you give the dog these ambivalent feelings. But you can have 15 kids in the room without jealousy, without envy. It is not human nature. It's human behavior that's shaped by culture. If, like I said, if you were brought up in China years ago, you'd walk with your hands in your sleeves and shuffle and wear a long pigtail. And so, well, that's human nature. That's not. That's the influence of environment on your behavior. So every human being is perfectly well adjusted from where they are coming from, from their background and experience. If you, as a baby, were raised by the Seminole Indians, you would behave, if you never saw anything else, like a Seminole Indian. And if you were brought up in any other Indian group and you had feathers in your head, in your hat, in your headgear, and you were dancing around the fire, and I walked over and said, that's ridiculous, what are you dancing around the fire with the feathers for? You don't take your hat, throw it on the ground, and say, you know, I never thought of it that way. We can't do that. We're victims of culture. We look at the world with our background. We have no other way of doing it. Psychology is kind of a, a rudimentary form today, an attempt to grasp at the factors that shape human behavior, the factors that are responsible for the way we look at ourselves, other people, and the way we behave, or, if you wish, misbehave. I don't believe that any human being misbehaves. They use whatever tools they know of, whatever tools they're familiar with. What makes criminal behavior? What are the factors that make a Jeffrey Dahmer? I'm sure you know who that was. Before Jeffrey, there was Albert Fish. I don't know if any of you remember Albert Fish. Albert Fish was a fine-looking gentleman. He ate 45 children. Well, you wonder, how can anyone do that kind of thing? I'm going to try to give you some idea of the background of Albert Fish. When he was a youngster, about 10 years old, he was touching his private parts. His mother was an old-time Baptist, and she says, you are going straight to hell. You will burn eternally. And that kid, Albert Fish, stuck needles into his genitals because he didn't want to burn in hell. And he took other children into empty lots and cut off their private parts because he wanted to save them. If you're brought up in a distorted environment, which we all live in today, any judge that wraps the gavel and says 30 years is an ignoramus because he has no idea of the factors that shape 
human behavior. When you become aware, if you bring up a healthy boy with about six women, and one of the girls says, oh, did I see a gorgeous hat? That boy will pick up the same mannerisms, same facial expressions, and say, oh, I just love that hat. Because if that's the environment, if you're brought up in Italy, you say, hey, what's the matter? You like or you don't like? In other words, it depends on where you're brought up. Did you know that Lincoln was Irish? It depends on your, your group and the values that you exchange. And if you want a world without war, without hatred, without crime, and without stupidity, it can be arranged. Americans have been conditioned in, a, in their kind of society to get a different kind of car next year, to buy a new television set or a tape recorder. We are radical as hell. To change the relationship between people, where the male and female are not given separate roles. Where the female say, I want to be a biochemist or a physicist, and she goes that way. When you hand a girl a doll, you're placing a set. You're beginning to manipulate the people. Everybody's afraid of controlling human behavior. You're always controlling behavior. When you pick up your little girl and say, don't play with that little Lutheran boy across the way. And you put him down again. Or don't talk to that little Catholic girl across the way. Well, you're always indoctrinating children. Who loves you more than anything in the world? The candy store man. No, your mommy and your daddy. See, indoctrination continuously. Gregory once told me that being black and living in the South, Dick Gregory, he said, whenever I was late for work, I couldn't run to the bus because they would wonder what that blackie was up to. Running. See, in other words, we project our value system into others. We project characteristics into others. Uh, a psychologist in one session said that, well, I know two children that came from the same environment, and if environment is everything, one turned out to be a gangster, the other a minister. If environment is everything, how do you get those differences? The minute you pick up one child and start playing with it, and the other stands there with that little, you're making jealousy and envy. There's no such thing as the same environment. So when I pick up my little girl, I pick up my older little boy. You never work with one child. Why can't you keep your area clean? Your brother does all the time. You leave all your things around. Well, when he trips and falls down the stairs, his brother smiles. An inhibited smile, of course. But he does smile. So we build these artificialities in the world we live in today. We've got to interfere and change things.